Hello everyone, Loremaster of SoTech here, and I have a very special video for you today. So, a not small number of people have gone to the point of donating money, begging for a Chloe video. Which, the picture you're looking at right now is, of course, uh, me and... Well, I'll just kind of go over the pictures as we see them, or I'll kind of talk about them. You'll just see them flashing up at the top, because I'm not going to set them to any specific time. But, you know, I've included a couple of pictures of me and her. Um, for instance, the one we're starting this video on is me eating... I think that's monkey bread? I can't... It looks like monkey bread. But in any event, um, I'm eating breakfast, and there's Chloe when she got to the wonderful age where she could put her head on the damn table um, casually, as you see here, just staring at the bacon. Because <laughs> like most dogs, that's all she really cares about. We've got a couple of other images in here that I'll sort of describe. Most of them are her as a puppy. There are, of course, a couple of them of her at her current age. Um, there's one of me and her napping on the ground. Uh, there's one where she's sleeping on the ground um, in kind of a darkish room, and that's her now. That was taken a few days ago. And then most of the rest are puppy pictures, so I hope you enjoy those. Um, so who is Chloe Bear, and who is the mascot of this channel? Um, she's a very important member of my family, um, and of course of the uh, channel. So Chloe is a white lab great pyrenees mix and her story uh starts off a little sad but it gets better so let's go ahead and get started so in february of 2010 chloe was born um in a a, a little in a city not too far from mine um and her basically these two families were friends and one of the families had a female Great Pyrenees, and the other family had a male White Lab. And you can, neither of them were fixed, and you can guess what happened. Um, however, these individuals, which is the nicest way I can describe them, who were A, too lazy and dumb to get their dogs fixed, and B, were kind of terrible people because of what comes next, they basically, they didn't want the puppies. Um, but instead of doing the responsible thing and, like, handing them over to families that would want them or giving them over to a humane society or what have you, they just decided to, uh, the puppies were born outside and they just left them outside. But they kept mom inside because the, she wasn't an outside dog. So the puppies were had outside. And this was in February, which you, you may think that Texas winters are not cold and you would be horribly horribly wrong <laughs> texas winters get agonizingly cold um the we just don't get a ton of snow um is our thing we don't get a lot of pre precipitation with our winter but so it was uh freezing weather like we're talking 20 to 15 degrees um especially at night um if not lower and these puppies basically huddled together in a ditch underneath a trailer. Um, like a little hole, because it was the only place... And they just huddled together and tried to provide each other warmth. Um, which is disgusting and tragic, and it makes me really angry to think about. Um, and a woman drove by, saw the puppies, and called... Um, I don't remember who she called, but it was like the local version of the Humane Society in that city... And they went to the house and said, you know, if you're just not going to take them, then will you surrender them to us? And the owners agreed. So they took all the puppies. Um, originally, there were 11 of them. And I think three? Three or four. It was either three or four. I think it was three of them died. Um, from They were frozen to death. Um, because it, it was that bad. Um... So the puppies were taken, um, and they were taken to this woman's house, um, because they didn't have, like, a traditional pound. This, this society didn't work with, like, a traditional pound or anything. They basically just had a group of fosters. And so, uh, they took all the puppies to this foster, and her daughter gave them, or her son, excuse me, gave them all different names. Um, 
And Chloe, of course, at this point had uh, between six and seven siblings, brothers and sisters. Um, but Chloe was a bit of a loner. Um, and her original name, uh, her, the first name given to her was Kafka. Because apparently this woman's son was obsessed with African music or something like that. Like it, It's the name of like an African singer or band or something like that. And all of them had really bizarre names like that. And an advertisement was put out online um, for people to come adopt these puppies. So um, my family had been without a dog at this point for about... Uh, six months um, the dog that I got when I was a child whose name was Ranger um, and he was a yellow lab pointer mix he passed away um, in the September of 2009 so about so roughly six months later in February of 2010 was when we got Chloe um, and basically my, my parents found her online and you had to fill out an application process and send them like a recommendation from your vet. Um, and then you had to go like do an interview. Like they were very, they wanted to make sure these puppies were going to good owners. So my parents went through all that. And if I recall correctly, my parents got first or second pick out of the litter. And when they went to visit, um, they noticed that Chloe was a bit of a loner. Um, she was very standoffish from her siblings. Um, she didn't really like to play with them or anything like that the only one that she liked which is a uh the only dog that she liked at the time which is a picture you'll see here was essentially their adoptive father who was um this uh darker colored uh this brown dog you'll see um and his name was chewbacca and he was basically their dad um and chloe adored him she would just follow him around and uh, she loved to cuddle up with them and just sleep. And so they went and uh, picked Chloe up after they, you know, selected her and, uh, you know, they passed all the process. And I was away at college at the time, for the record. So I literally just get a text one day. Um, you know, we, we'd been talking about getting a puppy, but, you know, they just kind of sent me a text while I was busy with school. <laughs> um, and it was Chloe on her first car ride home which is the image and I'll try and kind of line these images up but it's the image of her she's on a she's on a blanket she's very small um there's another one with her on a pillow but she's bigger in that picture but she was this adorable little baby and they brought her home and um from there just kind of started raising her um I came home to visit that spring break with my girlfriend at the time um and or no, I came home sooner than that, actually. I came home for like a weekend or uh, like a three-day weekend or something. Uh, and we got to spend time with Chloe and I got to meet her for the first time. And I remember she was she was so tired. Like, you know, puppies at that age, like, they have bursts of energy and then they just sleep forever. Because, you know, they gotta grow. And uh, she, um, I remember trying to get her to play with me or like cuddle and stuff and she would just be like oh let go of me so she could go and sleep on the tile in like the kitchen or something um and that's how we got her um since then chloe has lived a very active and uh not in the in significantly spoiled life um she was a pill growing up um she was very stubborn um she had you know a very strong mindset of her own um, when she was younger and you try to take her on car ride, she'd get car sick most of the time, which was, uh, she was horrible about that. You'd be drive, I'd drive her somewhere to like go pick up my brother, uh, when he was umpiring. I'd go to pick him up or take him lunch if he forgot or something like that. And she would, she would be doing okay. She'd be doing okay. She'd be doing okay. We would literally pull up in front of the house. I put the car car and park and i'd hear this <laughs> she just barf in the back and it's like come on <laughs> like you're killing me you couldn't have waited five more seconds but she was adorable um when i came home that summer um i spent basically the entire summer home um my sister was um just getting set up for college and my brother had a job that he was very busy with so i was pretty much the only one home a lot of the time so every morning, 
I'd wake up and go down and go back to sleep in my parents' room where she would sleep, so she'd sleep with me. And then eventually she'd start moaning and crying and, like, nipping me and, like, hitting me with her paws, trying to be like, get up, let's go do stuff, let's go do stuff. So I'd have to take her on a walk every morning. Every damn morning. But, I love, you know, of course I fell in love with her. And as did everyone in my family, she's a valued member of the family. You know, we're one of those, we're... There are a lot of people out there who, they're like, you know, dogs are, they're just pets. Like, you know, they're like, you know, dogs should sleep outside or, blah, 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 blah. like, I, I fucking hate that shit. Like, dogs are one of the most valuable things you can have in your life. I mean, pets are, in my opinion. Uh, but especially, like, dogs and cats. Um, you know, there there's, they can have such a strong emotional bond with you as a person. Um, in a way that pretty much no other animals can. And even then, dogs are on a whole other level compared to most cats. Um, but in any event, so uh, Chloe, you know, grew up and uh, she's doing great nowadays. She's a very healthy dog. She's very athletic. Um, she weighs somewhere in the ballpark of 95 to 100 pounds. She's quite large. Um, if she stands on her back two legs, she can get up to about 5'11". Uh, five feet 11 inches um uh she used to jump a lot on people which was very bad because she was big uh but thankfully we broke her of that habit um but uh she was a wild child uh, when she was younger you know she was one of those dogs she loved to pull hard on the leash and she had a lot of strength she loved to pull hard she wanted to go everywhere she loved to chase bunnies and squirrels uh, didn't care for cats or birds very much um, there was one cat she was moderately interested in when she was younger, and she got close to him, and he just whopped her right in the face. And she was like, well, okay, I'm done with that. Like, no thanks. Um, she hasn't been terribly interested in cats ever since then. She doesn't chase them. She doesn't really care about them. Um, but um, she's calmed down a lot. She's now seven years old. Um, almost. Oh, wait, sorry. We got her in the spring of 2011. Because I went to college in the fall of 2010. My bad. So, yeah, she is she is seven years old. Seven and a half now. Um, but, because uh, I was also born in February. So me and her kind of, we celebrate our birthday at the same time. Because, yes, we're one of those people we celebrate our dog's birthday. We don't go crazy, like, with a cake or any shit like that. You know, it's just like, we just buy her, like, a special bone from PetSmart or something. But, you know. Um, I will say... Um, she is very spoiled nowadays. She's a very picky eater. Um, Chloe is not like most dogs. Most dogs you meet will, if you put food in their vicinity, or they think it's food, they will literally inhale it. Chloe's not one of those dogs. Um, she is a very picky eater. Um, and my parents, unfortunately, have done everything <laughs> to reinforce, have allowed her to get away with being picky. Um, because they kind of lost the war of attrition against her. You know, uh, my, my folks would, uh, try and feed her dog food, like, you know, like the same dog food every day. And she would just not eat for four or five days, like just starving them. Like she would just protest starve herself. Um, and finally my parents would cave and, you know, add in a little something. Now she does eat healthy. However, she does not eat dog food. She eats basically people food. Like, what we do for Chloe is we literally go to the store. Um, we go to, like, the manager special area. So, like, the meat that's going to expire in, like, a couple days or something. So, they're trying to, you know, get rid of it before it goes bad. Um, we'll buy that, like, you know, pork loin or chicken gizzards or what have you. And come home, cook it, cut it up, and that's what she eats. And, like, if it's me, like, you know, I'll cook up the meat and I'll cut it up and I'll feed it to her pretty straightforward. My parents, oh, man, like, sometimes they'll put, like, a little tiny bit of butter, you know, on there. Or maybe they'll add just a dash of, like, some crap like salt or whatever. So this dog eats better than most people do. Um, especially since, uh, due to her pickiness, my wonderful family just refuses most of the time to feed her the same thing twice in a row. So, like say we get like a bucket of chicken gizzards and you feed her some of those you know we, we don't overfeed her um you know you feed her a reasonable amount 
but um, that way she stays, you know, she stays lean and healthy and powerful, um, and can live to a nice old age. But um, this damn dog will, uh, she'll like refuse. Like she'll just walk up and sniff and be like, Ugh, and she'll just wait. Um, and like she's so lackadaisical about eating that we only feed her once a day most of the time. Um, like we'll, you know, we'll fill up her bowl and at night, and she'll eat like half of it. And then maybe at like 3 a.m. she'll get up and go eat another quarter of that. And then in the morning she'll eat a little more of that. Until, you know, it'll eventually be gone by the time the next uh, evening rolls around. Now if she's hungry, you know, she's very communica communicative with us. You know, and that if she wants to go outside she'll scratch at the door. If she wants a cookie she'll scratch at the door. And then when you open the door she'll back away from it and give you this look like, uh, like... <laughs> You fell for it, now please give me a cookie, and it's like, damn dog. Like, that's the worst. When you're, like, in the middle of watching a movie or something, and she scratches the door, so you're like, oh, the dog has to go out. So you go and open the door, and then she just backs away from the door and looks at you, and her tail will, like, wag really slowly. And it's just like, son of a damn fucking dog. <laughs> like, um, but she's wonderful. I love her to death. She, she's very personality heavy. Um, she, she's very stubborn. She's a princess. Um, but she's very well behaved. You know, that's the thing. It's not like, um, you know, she was, of course, disciplined when she would misbehave when she was younger to try and make sure she understood what was okay and what wasn't. You know, I've, I've met people who have dogs, um, that they just have no control over. And the dog is just like a huge pain in the ass. And, you know, it's just like, you can't tell who the owner is, you know? Um, but like with Chloe... You can give her voice commands and she'll listen to them, or there are nonverbal commands she knows. Um, you know, if I snap and I point at something, she understands that, you know, if, if it's like a couch or something, she'll usually get up on it, you know, so I can sit next to her and we'll just chill. Or, you know, if we're on a walk, you know, if I tell her to sit, she'll immediately stop moving and she'll wait until I give her a command to move again. Um, you know, she's very good with other dogs. Um, she doesn't like to play with other dogs. She doesn't like other dogs. But she's very polite. Like, she'll sniff and be interested, but she don't want to play with them. She's kind of like, ah, I just want to be left alone. Um, but she, you know, she's no problem with them. Um, she loves people. She absolutely adores people. She's always super excited to see anybody. Doesn't matter who on God's earth it is. She is just happy to see you because she assumes you're there to see her. Um, so she's just like, oh, somebody new to play with me or pet me or whatever. Um, and she just, she gets way too vamped up when someone shows up. And all she wants to do is for you to pet her. That's all she wants, to, just for you to pet her. Um, no, she's a great dog. She She's not the most uh, playful type anymore. She's kind of, I don't know if aged out of that is the right word. Because I take her on 20 to 40 minute walks every day. Um, at least recently, um, I used to trade off shifts with other members of my family, but recently I've been doing it because I need to get my blood pressure down, um, and lose some weight, and that's a good way to do it. Um, but, uh, you know, with those walks, she tends to get just, you know, all the energy she wants out, and then after that she just sleeps or hangs around. You know, she'll get up on the couch next to you and cuddle with you, or she'll... S Chloe likes to be where she can see you at the very least, um, but she does like to be able to touch you sometimes. Um, she'll have odd days where she gets, like, super cuddly, and she, like, has to be touching you. Like, her foot has to be touching you, or, or she'll, she'll, one of her favorite things to do, which can be really good or bad, depending on if you're ready for it, is she'll get up on the bed, um, that you're sleeping in, and she'll walk over to you, and she's standing, and she'll literally just, like, lean sideways until she just falls, and she'll just fall on you, like, her back on you and her legs facing away. So you're just sitting there minding your own business, and all of a sudden this 90-pound dog, you're just like, oh! <laughs> it's, it's like, oh, fuck. Uh, just knocks the wind out of you. That way she can be like, you, she knows she's as close as possible, and then she'll, you know, she'll slide off you, and then she'll just be touching you with her back, but she'll just pass out, and you won't have any other problems. But, um, and then there are times she doesn't like to be, like, she, you know, she gets tired of people sometimes. She'll go sleep in a closet or what have you. If she's not interested. She, of course, she has an attitude. Like, if you travel and you're gone for a long time, like, you know, a few days or even a few weeks, when you get back, she'll be excited to see you at first. But then you get the moody. <laughs> then she'll, like, she'll do shit where, like, she'll stay... 
she'll like always have her back facing you. Like she'll come into the room you're in and she'll sit where you can't reach her and she'll be deliberately facing away from you. She's like punishing you by not acknowledging your presence. She's just, she's such a goof. But um, that's pretty much the full story of Chloe. Um, I adore her um, and she's a part of this channel, you know. Every once in a while I put out little non-content clips and just a lot of people want to know more about her. So hopefully that answers your questions. Um, she's a nice, healthy, seven-year-old dog. Um, you know, she's a big dog, so, you know, getting to ten is, uh, hopeful, but not easy for big dogs. But she's still, she's still perfectly healthy, doesn't have any health complications, doesn't have any problems. Her, you know, unlike a lot of labs and lab mixes, her hips are really good, so that's really nice. You know, both of my prior dogs had hip dysplasia, which wasn't fun when they got older. Um, so she still moves around really good, and she's still, when she gets excited, she still acts like she's six months old. And, um, but most of the time, she's very chill, and is just she's just a perfect dog. I don't know how else to describe her. Um, but I absolutely love her to death, and, uh, you know, I'll keep putting out those little random clips of her from time to time, whether it's her trying to catch a bunny in the backyard, or um, being on a walk, or snoozing somewhere, or what have you. Um, so for those of you who enjoy this kind of stuff, there you go. I hope that gives you enough info about Chloe. Feel free to ask some, any questions you have about her in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, she's, she's an adorable dog. She's a beautiful, wonderful, well-behaved dog. It's just great. And I can't imagine life without her. And, you know, four or five years from now, um, more than likely when she passes away, that's, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. But, you know, we'll survive. And we'll get a new, you know, and then someone, it'll be time for a new pup to take up the mantle. Um, you know, when I lost Ranger, because uh, he was my dog growing up. I got him when I was like six or seven. And I had him till I was 18. And, uh, no, I got him when I was, I got him when I was nine. Because he passed away when he was like nine years old. Um, that was, that was so hard. But, you know, one thing I've learned um, since I started, when I went to college, you know, I lived by, I moved away from my family a long way away. And then, you know, when I, even when I moved closer and I lived in a city kind of next door, you know, 30, 45 minutes away, um, living by myself, I just, man, I hated it. I hated every second of it. And it made me realize just how in, in, integral it is to have a pet in your life. Um, especially if you're someone that like struggles with anxiety or depression or loneliness, you know, just having a creature, if nothing else, that is excited to see you when you come home and like their whole world is you, that it's so helpful. You know, I don't know how many mornings I would not have even been able to get out of bed to go exercise or just even eat much less if it hadn't been for the fact that the dog is standing there staring at me like, come on, it's time to go, let's go do stuff, you know, so, she's, she's a very important part of my life, and although my life certainly isn't perfect, and there's a lot of, you know, health issues that I have to battle, um, you know, mostly revolving around uh, mental health, you know, she has been a stalwart defender for me, um, so, Hopefully that answers your questions and gives you enough to be able to have context to enjoy her when you see her on a random little 30 second clip I put out or if you see her sleeping on my bed when I'm live streaming. Um, I hope you all have a great day and uh, I'm going to go give her some pets. <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm gonna go uh, cuddle with the damn dog for a little bit because all this talking about her makes me want to go pet her. So um, I will see you guys later. We've got traditional lore videos coming uh, very soon. So I hope you're all looking forward to that jazz. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys.